Good morning, everybody, and welcome to this week's Furman Football Weekly with head coach Clay Hendricks. The Paladins are coming off of a 16-8 homecoming victory over ETSU, running their winning streak to six in a row. And the new polls out today, both the coaches poll and the media poll, Furman has moved up to number two in each of those polls, the highest ranking the Paladins have held in the regular season since 2005. This coming Saturday, we go on the road to Chattanooga. We'll talk more about the broadcast for that game coming up in a bit. Joining Coach Hendricks at the table today are Tyler Huff and Xavier Stevens. We'll ask Coach to make an opening statement as we always do. I'll let Tom Van Hoy ask the first question after that. Well, again, appreciate you being here. Uh, really happy to get tough Southern Conference win Saturday. Um, I think, uh, you know, look at it defense, I was played really, really well defensively. Uh, I think probably if you would like, would like to call a few of those other picks that we had in our hands, uh, it really could have made a huge difference. Uh, but otherwise, other than that, I'm not sure they could have done a lot more than they did. Uh, you know, done a really good job last month, three, four weeks of eliminating some explosive plays, which is something we struggled with a little bit earlier in the year. Uh, but, you know, playing at a high level, certainly be challenged much more so, especially this week. You know, going forward, we're really, really proud of that. Uh, you know, block, block punt, uh, a little bit, uh, you know, something they had done had come. You know, we we created a little better angle for them with some of the things we did with, with uh, you know, putters alignment. Uh, need to have a merge to get the ball away. Uh, but certainly it was something we don't want to do. We'll continue to work on it. We, we, we've been pretty good in that area. I thought we kicked the ball really well in. We had a great day kicking. Uh, now, offensively, a little different story. Uh, I felt like, uh, I think first of all, you got to give, I give East Tennessee a bunch of credit. I think they, they did a great job of getting after us. Kind of gives a few little different things, which we kind of see every week. Um, but I just, you know, I, I don't think we had a guy, I don't think we had a guy on offense play well. I, I think we had given play a week to Jake Johanny. We moved out to play left tackle. Never played it in the game. Pearson, you know, we didn't let Pearson go last week. Uh, but just, just didn't play very well. Uh, you know, didn't, did, didn't block well. Didn't, didn't uh, break tackles. Didn't win contested balls. I mean, you just go down the, you know, go down the, go down the table. We didn't, we didn't do anything very well offensively. Uh, you know, hopefully that can be good for us going forward. It's something we've certainly addressed at length with our guys uh, yesterday, and, and we'll move on, and we have. Uh, and again, I, I don't know, I'm kind of a, I'm walking through the lobby out there yesterday. You know, you tried to talk yourself off the cliff after you know, played and felt like offensively, and, you know, I'm flashing to that 88 championship game, and the video's running, and I, all of a sudden the Chattanooga game comes up. And I'm sitting there thinking, I remember three things about that game. I remember it was about the, the weather guy delayed the game. I remember Pat Turner, I think it was the first quarter, had a pick six. Uh, and we had to stop them at the end of the game defensively. I think we won 10 to 7. You know, that we won the national championship. I think that Chattanooga team was 4 7. Uh, and then I got reminded, another friend reminded me about 2004. I didn't, I didn't, I don't remember this game. He was talking about the Elon game. You know, we went up, I think we were second, third country. Went 10 to nothing, uh, really, really struggled. I even pulled it up and looked at it. And I think the next week we came to play George Southern, two versus three, and maybe the, I don't know, maybe the best game ever in that stadium, you know, that I've been a part of. You know, so I, I don't know. It, I think each week's a little different. Uh, you know, we gotta learn from it. Uh, yeah, we, I still think our kids are playing hard doing it, but you know, we gotta play harder. You know, we certainly gotta be more physical. And certainly the execution level I don't think that'll be a problem this week, you know. And, you know, playing an outstanding Chattanooga, super, super talented. You know, there are 40, around 40 transfers. I mean, double digit power five transfers. They are talented. And I think the whole key for them has been, I think the question mark for them probably, you know, as I looked at them coming into the season was the quarterback. And he certainly answered that. You know, he played really, really well. He certainly hurt you with deep throwing football, developing a receiver. Kind of gone to a, 
you know, more of a, a pass first run where that maybe a little different from their philosophy in the past. Still run it well, uh, just really, really good everywhere. And then certainly outstanding defense. They, they've been that way, have a scheme they truly believe in, they're good at. It'll be, it'll take a huge task out for us to get it done this week. So, uh, but with that, certainly open up any questions you may have. Coach, on uh, post game uh, on Saturday, you talked about uh, you had a great week of preparation and maybe you didn't play as well as you wanted to. Is there a correlation with this team between the way you practice and the way you play? I think it's a correlation with every game when you do that. Sometimes it doesn't get exposed. Uh, I think the word of the week this week, we talked about yesterday's urgency. Uh, you know, just how we practice, how we plan, attention to detail. You know, we had a few little moving parts. We were a little different last week, but I think we had a little bit of every week. You know, feel really good about Chris coming back. Practice yesterday. Uh, you know, Jake. I think some people maybe don't realize how tough of a challenge that is to, to pop out there and play left tackle. He never played it in the game before, but I thought he handled that pretty well. Uh, you know, and uh, I don't know. You know, a little bit. Of my mindset has been uh, let's win the war. You know, and, and the war goes on for a little while, and, and you know, some things you do, and uh, you know, just maybe things you do schematically, how you try to attack people. So, uh, no, I mean, we certainly got to have a great week of practice, give them a good plan. And, you know, in their place, a direct reflection of me, and, and we got to do a better job of certainly getting our guys ready to go. They're certainly willing and, and capable, and I think we're in pretty good, pretty good shape health-wise. You know, tough stretch we've been in. I think maybe the toughest stretch that anybody's having to play against. We, it did really, I, I still kind of throw Sanford in there ranked on us three of three of the last four on the road. Uh, you know, so I, I think, uh, you know, I think we're, I think we're ready for that. I know this Chattanooga group, I think this is 10 weeks in a row for them, you know, and everybody's gonna beat up this time of year. So, uh, you know, but certainly we'll get their best ever again. And I think they'll get ours too. So it'll be a heck of a game. That's interesting that last year, uh, as it turns out, the conference championship was early October or whenever y'all played Sanford. You know, you're waiting all year to see if Sanford might lose and get, get a share of the title or whatever. And then we didn't know the results of Western Mercer when the game was over here the other day. Based on that result, now we have a de facto SoCon championship this Saturday. Uh, the winner's going to be the automatic bid to the, and obviously you have more goals after this, no matter what happens this Saturday, more stuff to do later on. But it, it just kind of is upon us now. Yeah. And can you speak to, um, Maybe versus say last year, where you kind of hoping after that slip up here early in the season, being able to have to go ch have the chance to go and earn it on the field this week. Well, I told our team yesterday. You know, the difference last year was we were, we, we needed help. You know, we had to do our part, but we needed help, and, and we finished we finished great, uh, and 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 need some people to give us a little help. Nobody could quite get it done, and you know, credit Sanford for finishing the way they did. I think what's what's a little bit different, Chad, this is it for them. You know, I mean, it, they got a, it's a one game for them, and I think that by next week, then they finish with Alabama. So, you know, in our case, certainly we got, you know, it's kind of unusual you're playing somebody that are playing their last conference game, and we got three more conference games. Uh, but, but obviously, you know, I made sure in our team meeting yesterday, I went over everything with our team. They know exactly where everything stands. Uh, so, absolutely. Uh, you know, that's the kind of game you want to play in, and, you know, I'll be a, I'll be a heck of an environment to go play. And, um, you know, still a lot of football out there before, you know, as, as we got going forward. But certainly this game certainly has huge implications. Coach, I want to talk a little bit about the red zone. Uh, you're uh, still in the 80 percent, uh, keeping uh, scores going on, and you've, you're now holding the opponents to 68 percent. What's your thoughts on that, uh, seeing that your defense is really stepping up in the, in the red zone? Well, our defense has, and we did a better job later in the year with eliminating people getting in the red zone. We've been pretty solid there. Defensively doing a good job, certainly great to get blocked the other day. Offensively, a little different. I think one of our biggest, you know, thing that just stands out to me, the number of points we've left on the field the last couple of games, uh, even going back to Sanford, you know, had a chance to really put, put some distance between some folks. Uh, how we started the game the other day, felt like it should have been 14 nothing. It's a different game if you do that. Uh, you know, so I, th I think all those all those plays were kind of big. You know, and we had a, a gimme block, you know, the punt. I mean, we just I don't know how we could have missed it, but we missed it. 
uh, you know, so you just take advantage of those opportunities you get. And we get down there. I think we get. I think after Colts catch, we had it first and nine. We had, we had two mental errors and a penalty. You know, three straight plays, and uh, that's not us. But it was a Saturday. You know, and I think even even the first drive. You know, Wayne caught the little swing pass down there, and we just didn't execute. Didn't do some things we were supposed to do. We get some chance. And I think they blitzed us on the on the third down. We were a five minute protection. They didn't cover a tight end. We didn't have a chance to get it all. But, uh, you know, got to go practice better. You know, we get prepared for those. We, uh, I think anytime you can run the football, it certainly helps you down there. And I think we've done a pretty good job of that. We didn't do it Saturday. Um, so we're, we're going to look at some things we're doing, you know, especially red zone offense, and we got to get better. And again, this is that group. You get opportunities down there. They don't let lots of people. They're a little bit like our defense. They don't let lots of people down there. When you do, you got to get touchdowns. You know, I really thought there was a difference in the game last year. You know, we got it in, and we were able to make some field goals and some kicks. Tyler, you were not a big part of the running game on Saturday. Was that by design? Was that by what ETSU was doing defensively? And we're obviously more accustomed to seeing you doing things in the RPO and, and whatever the, the case is, but we didn't see that Saturday. No, it wasn't by design. It's more of what ETSU was doing. They um, they always had somebody count for me, whether it be a safety, a straight from linebacker when they got an exchange on the back side of a lot of the zone option plays we have. But I mean, no, they did it. They did a good job with that. Um, we didn't call a lot of QB runs. This wasn't the game plan this week. Didn't feel like we needed it. And um, yeah, just they they followed it up and they implemented it. So props to them for that. Um, Tyler, you guys as an offense feel like you would have done a really good job of taking care of the football and um, tell me like in your this being your second year as a starter uh, when a play's not there and you really don't have the, the option to run it how, how quickly do you know um, that you know, I'm going to throw the ball away or just you know put it to a position to where it can be picked off or or you know and just speak to the way the running backs are taking care of the football and not really fumbling it too much or anything. Yeah, um, well speaking on me first, I probably, I want to say probably, I haven't done a very good job of actually checking the ball down. It's, I usually get the you know, first read, second read, and take off run, and then I run around, hopefully I look at <coughs> somebody there if I'm build away. So, I mean, there's a lot of, like Coach was saying, a lot of missed points, a lot of, you know, missed yards with that as well. If I ch check it down, and, Throw it down with running back a lot. They're usually wide open. A lot of defense forget about them, and I mean they <coughs> they especially do it against us because I never throw it to them. So um, that is something I need to improve on um, with that. But um, on the running backs, I mean we work with that every day about ball security. They do it probably two three drills a day about it. So they do a really good job with that. Um, Coach Cordy does a good job. They have a whole you know bag full of tricks in there that they do different kind of drills for them. All. So it's good with that. But yeah, we do it every day. So I mean just still doing our guys and. You know, we haven't had, I don't know if we've had a fumble. I think they've all, all the terms been picked on me, but um, if, you know, we fumble in practice, or, you know, they, they make sure not to do it again, for sure. Xavier, you're two years here at Furman. and you've been a part of a defensive uh, line unit that uh, frankly is a little bit rare in terms of having a lot of depth. Um, a lot of, some of us have been around here for a number of years, can remember we'd have a pretty good front line and not much behind it, but in your two years, you've been part of a unit that rotates. Your mindset, do you, do you want to be a little selfish? Do you ever want to come off the field uh, as, as a player, knowing you, but uh, with the guys behind you and perform real well, does that, does that make a difference? I think in high school I was selfish, but now I understand that I got about four plays in me where I can give it my all, and then the next guy's got four plays in them they're gonna give it their all. So that rotate really helps us out that we can be fresh the whole game. And then realistically, we have ones, twos, we got threes who can also play. We just haven't had the chance to really throw them in. So I think depth is a big part of how our D-line can play. So, yeah. Xavier, is this a, a really good group of, of defensive players, the, the chemistry and, and where you thought you would be at this point because you played outstanding so far all year long? For sure. I think. The way we connect on all three levels, DB, linebacker, D-line, it's just, we all work together and we all know what we gotta do and there's no hostility ever. We all know that if you mess up next play, like, we're all boys. I've never been part of a team where it's like that tight of a connection. 
we're all just on the same page at all times. I think that's helped us a lot this year. Avery, one of the more enjoyable aspects of watching the defense work that I've noticed is kind of like on offense where the line opens up holes for the running backs. On the blitz packages, sometimes it seems like you guys open up holes for the linebackers. And like the, the game ceiling sack the other day, it was like a pile up of trucks. And then Braden Gilby was in the Ferrari and comes in underneath and skids down and gets quarterback. Uh, can you speak to open up those lanes for your linebackers to fill to get the quarterback? Yeah, it's just part of doing your job. We, uh, at the D line, we've got to do things. Sometimes we'll get the sack, sometimes we won't. But I think it's important that, like, just every blitz, every package, every play we have, you're designed to do a specific job. And Coach Vaughn does a good job of keeping us on track. And that play was for Gilby to make. And we have a lot of plays like that. Um, but we get our opportunity on the D line, so we should take advantage of it. Uh, Coach, Jeff Harden's basically blocked six uh, field goal kicks uh, and been a big part of this team. Everybody's called him the new Matumbo of uh, college football. Uh, who do you have behind him that's going to take his place? Because, you know, it's it's going to be hard to – I mean, you're known for having great special teams. Yeah, I don't know. Um, you know, I think we got some good young guys in that group. But I, I think part of that is just having a, you know, just a little bit of a wolf too and a, and a nag. You know, and certainly I think the Jacks can free somebody to buy and help him. You know, because it's usually one guy's not coming free and by himself. Sometimes that happens, uh, but he's just got a good knack for that. You know, and, and certainly I think it's like anything else. Maybe we've got the point where we kind of expect to do it. I think a lot of people expect us to do it. But we'll run we got on last year, you know, later in the year. And it was later in the year, and maybe we're starting to trend here later in the year again. So, uh, like I said, I would love to have gotten that in the punt the other day, which was a big huge play for us there early in the game. But, uh, I don't know, I need to figure out who that next guy is. Clay, you're 14 and one in your last 15 conference games. You've won 11 in a row and seven in a row on the road. Do you think people really have any idea how difficult that is? I don't think they do. Uh, I think I started realizing that. I like to see you, you have high expectations. Um, you know, I credit our kids and our staff, you know, I think when you get the road, I think the road so much is about focus, you know, and but I, I do think there's something to be said when there's less of you and it's us and nobody else and yeah, we're gonna have our core fans there, but we gotta find a way to find a way to get it done. But that 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 uh, you know, it, it, those numbers get thrown I, I can remember back when I was a young coach here, you know, we had that run there in the first years I was coaching. I kind of remember that because you know, just, you know, heck, you want to have day and see if you keep it going. Uh, you know, and then having a chance to really play for a championship. I mean, at the end of the day, that's what we're all, all shooting for. We got a chance to do that Saturday, you know. And, um, you know, rankings, I, I think, you know, I'd love to be there three weeks from now if we're in the same spot. We'll be in a really good spot, you know. That means we took care of business down the stretch. But, uh, no, I'm, I'm not sure people sometimes realize how challenging. You know, we, we, you and I talked about that more now. It's about having, you know, we still have your fastball. And yeah, I want our kids to be, you know, bam, bam, bam every week. It's just not going to happen, you know. And, and you got to find a way to defense. Defense got done for Saturday. You know, maybe if it's a weak offense, it's going to get done. I don't know. Or make a big play at the kicking game. And, you know, I think, I think we have a really good team, you know. I think that's kind of, you know, I think it's just been a sign as much as anything. We just, complimentary football and find a way to get it done. And, uh, you know, that's what we need to be able to do this week. Um, Coach, I don't know if this is different, but I know they, they Chattanooga had to replace, I think, four offensive linemen coming into the season. Do you, do you find it different when you face a team, a, a lot of teams in this league, when, when they, they replace those guys that left last year? And, and that's an area they've been really strong and, and done a good job of really replacing guys with. Is it different when they replace those guys with FBS, you know, high level transfers as opposed to maybe bringing a guy up and, and kind of developing? How, what's the challenge for you in that? that well, I, I think there's there's probably some positives for it. There's also probably some negatives. You know, that, that group continuity is so much a part of it. 
experience, you know, been doing something, you know, because that, that staff's kind of been together for a while. But also you point a new guy, he hadn't been there. Uh, you know, and, and we haven't lived in that world very much. You know, we feel like we fill in a guy here and there. Uh, but, you know, all those office linemen, most of them guys have been there in Harvard. So, uh, you know, it certainly helps bring in talent. You know, and we're all better coaches when we got talent. And, you know, they got a Florida kid at one tackle. And I, I really don't, I kind of look down for them, you know, because they, they've been, that, I think that group stayed healthy all year. Uh, when I've watched them, it seems that we have kind of followed them just off watching them a little bit more. I think you said like quarterback unit. Uh, you know, certainly losing forward, forward, what a great player he was. And you hate that for a guy in his career, but uh, but they play the number of guys back there. So I don't I don't like I said it, it certainly helps to have talent, but I'm, I'm sure there's some challenges with it as well. Um, but again, so much of that group is just continuity and, uh, but it's it's worked out well for them. Tyler, you've got a very experienced receiving core that you distributed the ball in a really good fashion this year. You've got your veterans, Kendall Dean, Joshua Harris, uh, Luke Shifley. Talk about the two young guys that have stepped up this year, uh, Ben Ferguson and Colton Hinton. How, what are you seeing in them? And looks pretty good to us, but uh, let's get the quarterback's perspective on that. Yeah, they're, uh, as you said, they're very talented players. You know, they're a little bit different. Uh, Colton's the speedy, quick guy where he can get open just about any kind of situation. <coughs> ben, Ben's a much more crafty guy where he, um, you know, he has a little bit more finesse to him. And, you know, he's very sure-handed. He'll catch anything. So, uh, trust him and I trust Colton. And they've shown out. I mean, Colton's a, I don't know how much he weighs. Maybe he can't be no more than 180, 185. But, I mean, it, he gets around. It. He gets a jet sweep probably like once a game. And he puts his head down. and. For some reason, he likes to jump, and you know he jumps almost every time he gets the ball, and he usually gets caught in the air. And it doesn't look good, but he continues to do it. He pops right back up. I mean, he's shown me he's a tough player, and Ben's shown me he's Mr. Reliable. Every time the ball is near him, so those two young guys have stepped up when we needed them. So and we'll continue to need them. Well, it's another big game coming up on Saturday with Chattanooga and Berman's been in a lot of big games here most recently, and for Tyler and for Xavier, how fun is this for you to be in a game uh, that has this kind of importance? I mean, it doesn't get more exciting than this, playing for a championship and then really I don't even, to be honest, a ring's a ring, but I want to go undefeated in the SOCOM. That's what's more important to me. So I think it's just the next step. It's the next week, next game. I, I mean, I'm very excited. I, uh, you know, I've never really worn anything in my life, honestly, um, high school or my previous school. So it's uh, it's very exciting. You know, we didn't get it done last year. We slipped up. and. Um, you know, it's frustrating I could help out a little more last year with it. And I mean, this year we have the opportunity to do it. So, I mean, you know, you're going to get all from me and, you know, I'm going to make sure the rest of the offense is, you're going to get it all from them as well. So it, it'll be a fun game for us for sure. And they'll, they'll be a big test. So this will, this will really see how we are as a team. Coach, I've noticed on, on defense that you got guys like Gilby and Hugh Ryan who are kind of great players, but not boisterous or, or I don't know the right word, but then you have Master Trevor who has fun. And then Jack Martin just seems nuts uh, in a good way. But is it that whole mixture, is that kind of good for a, for a unit to have in terms of like the serious guys and the guys who keep things loose and also all of them just go about their business in, a, in a, the right way? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I think that's interesting. We, we say kind of the no-name bunch. You know, you look, I was looking at the tackle for the conference the other day. And, we don't have a lot of guys, and just like I noticed, we've got our sack, 20 sacks for almost 12 guys. I think we have like 20 guys with tackles for loss, you know, and so, but they bought into that, you know, and, and we're just not going to have a guy that's just got, he's not going to be up there at the top of the league with tackles, uh, you know, and, and, uh, but I, I think they bought into it. It's been a really good recipe for us, and, and again, it's just a little selfish. A lack of selfishness, uh, you know, just kind of the way they've approached it and handled it. And got some guys, I mean, Evan Baggio stepped up the last couple of weeks. Evan's been a really good player for us, been really productive. Uh, you know, and then Austin just stepped in a little bit of a new role, and man, how well he's played. Uh, yeah, you just keep needing some guys like that to do that. And again, uh, again, credit Coach Vaughn and that whole defensive staff and what they've done. And even going back to Coach Vaughn. 
I, I just think that's a little bit of the nature of our team, which is a really fun group to be around. You know, and been around some really good group. There's just something unique about this group. You know, it's kind of the same group as last year, but but he, you know, most of those guys are back. And, uh, you know, like I said, I think, I think it makes us a, a tough bunch to beat. I mean, we're going to win every game, but I think just the makeup of who we are. You know, when things maybe don't go as well, and you know, we stick together play together and occur, you know, there's a lot of positivity there, uh, which gives us a chance to, to be successful. Um, Tyler, when you think back to this game last year, Chattanooga ordinarily has a really good defense, and, and um, I think last year the, the game, the first part of the game was an interception, and you kind of had their, their defense on the hook a little bit because you, you take over. What was something, particularly in the first half, you guys did really well offensively that was going to take that, that type of thing again on Saturday? Do you, can you think back to, to that game? Um, I would probably say it was more of the whole game um, was QB run. I think they, you know, we haven't shown that at all um, before that game last year, where it was actually QB design, where we had, they needed an extra hat to, you know, be sound and have an extra guy for me. Um, cause before that, it was just all, on scrambles here and there, but uh, no, that was a game, and they they haven't seen it on film, so they weren't prepared for it. I think um, I think that's where we really, you know, showed up and surprised them a little bit, and I think that's where we took advantage of because we you know the QB run that means you have an extra hat, you know, extra lead blocker now. So I don't think they're prepared for it. Um, I mean, obviously they'll be prepared for it this year. We've shown it a little bit this year, and obviously they know that's what you know hurt them last year. So we'll see what we can do. talk about this being a developmental program and it is obviously and, and when you take a transfer it has to be a right guy to, to fit a need because of everything the firm is about and you happen to have two of them sitting up there right now I'm just interested because we've talked to Tyler about this but Xavier when you were when you were looking around what was it that attracted you to Furman what was it that made you want to come here and play football I had an offer out of high school, but I had never visited Furman. So once I entered the portal, I got on campus, and I really got to I, I got to see some guys, and I really got to see the campus. And I think the school, along with the culture here, is really what attracts guys. And I think having being in like a situation I know where I could go or where I was gonna have. When they offered me, I was like, yeah, I gotta take this. It's too good of an opportunity not to have, um, especially the portal, you don't know where you're gonna go. And I think it was a great decision. I wouldn't have known how great it would be off that one visit, but I mean, the staff, I put on 40 pounds because I've been here. Didn't think I'd ever be this big and still move decently well. And just having a great deal and coach, great coaches all around and uh, I think we should have an amazing family, amazing culture, which I think is what separates us from most places. Uh, Coach, would you anticipate having Pierce to back this week and therefore Jake going back to guard and also any any feelings on Travis Blatcher? Is there a little bit? Yeah, there? I mean, Pearson practiced yesterday. Uh, Pearson backpack found me. I think Pearson was frustrated Saturday like the rest of us and found me after being the coach, you know, I'm playing next week. And so, uh, yeah, you know, he's got to go practice, but he practiced yesterday, and in fact, he's Mike City A, over there doing running back drill. So, I, you know, excited to have him back. That, that'll be the plan. We'll see. Uh, you know, Travis was somebody he's been playing with, you know, and just kind of got to the point from a health and safety standpoint, it needed to be addressed, and we felt like we could. They, they, they have, and the plan is to have him, too. You know, he'll be, he won't be able, he, he'll be a little more limited during the week. Uh, I thought I thought those guys, Mike and I, played really. They played their best game. Uh, they've been playing really well all year. I think so. Charles Ingram was a guy that popped in there and played a whole lot. And seemed like he handled it pretty well. We've got some really good young guys in that group that we're kind of excited about too. Uh, but then I'm, we, we, we we hope to have all those guys back. Well, that takes care of the questions from the uh, assembled folks here, Coach. I'll just ask you to make a final statement before we close it out. Well, no, again, appreciate you being here. Uh, you know, certainly a huge challenge, huge opportunity this week. And uh, I mean, I cut on the tape last night of uh, 
watching that game from a year ago. You know, there was no TV copy. It was it was our video. There's no volume, and you could just see the intensity of that football game on both sides of the ball. We were fortunate to get a win. Proud of our guys to do that. It'll be that kind of game again, I'm sure. Uh, you know, taking care of the football will be huge. And great with special teams. It's just they build upon the things we've done, and uh, certainly, certainly we know we'll get their best shot. And I certainly hope they get ours as well. So it should be great for our league. Uh, maybe we can get it where people are watching on TV this week. So uh, if, if you can't be there, but I think we'll have a great crowd there, and certainly uh, uh, again, be, be great, great opportunity for our football team. But but we'll, we'll certainly have our work cut out for us. Well, whether they can or can't, we'll be able to listen to it. Thanks. On the radio. That's right. So, <laughs> thank you, uh, head coach Clay Hendricks and uh, Tyler Hoff and Xavier Stevens for joining us. I'll just remind you that kickoff in Chattanooga is at 1.30. Uh, you'll be able to watch it, we hope, on ESPN+. Plus. If you uh, need the radio, we've got you covered with the Pepsi Countdown to kickoff at noon. And uh, that's on 97.7 FM in Greenville, 97.1 in Spartanburg, the Fan Upstate, and at odyssey.com. Look forward to having you with us on Saturday. Big matchup, and uh, hopefully a bunch of our fans can make it down there. That will take care of this week's edition of Furman Football Weekly with head coach Clay Hendricks for the coach. For Tyler and Xavier and all of us at Furman, I'm Dan Scott saying God bless you. So long, everybody. This has been a Hunter Reed Jeff Shetzel production.